All right, guys, now that you've had a chance to take a break, we're going to pick up with biological agents. Um, the biological agents are actual living organisms or uh, some type of toxin, um, where even a small amount could potentially cause widespread illness um, because people walk, to, uh, transporting it from person to person. Um, usually these take days to detect because once the biological agent has been exposed to them, it takes a couple days for it to um, manifest within them. Several biological agents may be used as weapons of mass destruction and pose a serious threat. Uh, these are categories categorized into four different groups. Demonia-like agents, encephalitis-like agents, biological toxins, and other. Uh, Pneumonia-like agents, um, these present with fever and difficulty breathing. Um, these include anthrax, which has an incubation period of one to six days. Uh, the patient may present with not only but fever, but also malaise, fatigue, non-productive cough, uh, mild chest discomfort that, uh, with progressing dyspnea, diaphoresis, strider, cyanosis, shock, and death could potentially occur within 2 to 36 hours. Plague, this has an incubation period of 2 to 3 days. Signs and symptoms include headache, hemoptysis, severe dyspnea, high fever, strider, cyanosis, and death secondary to respiratory failure, circulatory collapse, and bleeding disorder. Tularemia, this is chest pain that worsens with breathing, um, headache, malaise, nonproductive cough, as well as weight loss. Encephalitis-like agents cause fever, headache, and ultramental status. These agents include smallpox, um, which causes a sudden onset of malaise, uh, fever, headache, vomiting, and backache. Uh, you may also have a vesicular rash in some uh, in same stage of development appearing in two to three days. Uh, Venezuelan equine encephalitis also causes a sudden onset with malaise, fever, uh, severe headache, rigor, nausea, vomiting, cough, sore throat, and diarrhea with recovery within one to two weeks if treated properly. Biological to another biological toxin is botulinum. Uh, symptoms typically begin within 12 to 36 hours or even several days after inhalation or ingestion and eventually will lead to respiratory failure and death. Ricin, this causes weakness, fever, cough, and hypothermia approximately 36 hours after inhalation eventually followed by death within the following 12 hours due to hypotension and cardiovascular um, collapse if not treated appropriately. Staphylococcus enterotoxin 13. This causes fever, chills, headaches, body aches, and an unproductive cough within 3 to 12 hours after in inhalation. Um, if the patient has been exposed to a high dose Shock and death could potentially occur as well. Epsilon toxin, this causes cough, wheezing, and shortness of breath uh, within six hours of exposure. Uh, respiratory failure and death follow shortly from due to high exposure. Uh, you can also have liver damage as well. Trichothecene myotoxins, this causes pain itching, uh, redness and lesions on the exposed skin, nose and throat pain, runny nose and sneezing, um, skin may begin sloughing off, you may have nasal discharge, dyspnea and wheezing, uh, chest pain and hemoptysis or coughing up blood. We also have cholera, which is another biological agent. This causes vomiting, abdominal distension, profuse watery diarrhea, severe dehydration, and little or no fever. Uh, death potentially results due to severe dehydration and a shock associated with hypovolemia. Viral hemorrhagic fevers. This causes malaise, body aches, headache, vomiting, flushing of the face and chest, edemia, petechiae, or small pinpoint hemorrhages. Um, the patient may also have easy bleeding during the early stages and hypotension and shock in the late stages. 
Brucellosis um, causes fever, malaise, body aches, joint pain, headache, and cough. Uh, the care for biological agents is primarily supportive. Uh, recognition is extremely important for an advanced management of the patient. Only a few of these biological agents are highly contagious and can be passed from an infected person to another person. Smallpox, plague, and Ebola are all typically contagious. You want to isolate these patients as best you can in the field from those who are not affected. Response personnel should use personal protective equipment, including an N95 or HEPA respirator, head and face protection, impervious boots, gloves, and body splash protection. The use of antibiotics and antitoxins is imperative in the management of patients exposed to biological agents. The EMS provider must recognize a patient who may need such treatment, summon the necessary medical personnel, and continue to assess, uh, assist with treatment. A lot of times for biological agents, immunizations and prophylactic treatment are used in these cases. Um, definitely if you're going overseas, uh, that's why military personnel definitely during the early stages um, of the war in Iraq, um, they were being, uh, giving them anthrax immunizations. Nuclear weapons and radiation uh, it has three primary mechanisms of death. Radiation, blast, as well as thermal burns. Radiation, radiation is caused by energy that is released from the radioactive material. Um, these atoms are passing through and causing changes to the actual molecular structure within your own cells. With radiation, the cells may uh, die they may repair themselves or produce mutated cells. X-ray and gamma radiation, this is the type of radiation that's generated in the reactor of a nuclear power plant uh, by a nuclear bomb and also through the decay of radioactive particles such as in fallout. Gamma radiation is the major uh, external hazard and to a lesser extent um, internal hazard associated with a nuclear detonation or a reactor accident. With the neutron radiation is a powerful and damaging particle that penetrates several hundred meters of air and easily passes through the body. Because it occurs infrequently outside of the nuclear chain reaction, its greatest threat to life occurs near an active nuclear reactor or bone or bomb explosion. Excuse me. Beta radiation is a low speed, uh, low energy particle that's easily stopped by 6 to 10 feet of air, clothing, or the first few millimeters of skin. It is a common product of fallout decay and is a serious threat when ingested in contaminated food and inhaled in airborne particles. Thus, it poses a great internal hazard. Alpha radiation is a heavy and slow moving particle that travels only inches in the air and is stopped by clothing or other layers of the skin. It is a serious internal contaminant because it causes a great amount of damage along its short course of travel. As in beta radiation, alpha radiation can also be ingested or inhaled. The closer the detonation occurs to the ground, the greater the updraft of particles, resulting in more fallout. The radioactive material can scatter anywhere from a few miles from the detonation site to around the world. The most immediate danger from fallout occurs within 48 hours and within proximity to the blast. The wind blast can reach upwards to 160 miles per hour, displacing personnel and collapsing structures, leading to crush injuries and entrapment. Blast effects to the victims are reduced the farther away they are from ground zero. Uh, thermal burns, these usually cause the most deaths and injuries from a, a nuclear explosion. Um, eye injuries can also be associated with the brilliant light flash that occurs with a nuclear blast. The patient can be blinded for a few seconds, minutes, or even longer. Uh, similar to a radiological dispersal device, a radiological exposure device results in persons exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Uh, thus resulting in acute radiation sickness. 
However, such a device does not have the telltale indication of an initial explosion. An RED works by exposing individuals to lethal levels of radiation without the use of an, explo of an explosive. Dirty bombs, these is an actual, a conventional explosive with radioactive materials attached to it, thus causing widespread radiation illness as well as cont and contamination of the environment, as well as causing the explosive effects. Improvised nuclear devices, uh, these are usually as assembled and built specifically for a terrorist incident and usually made with low quality materials. Uh, owing to its illegal as assembly, such a device presents the additional hazard of not detonating properly and exposing patients to hazardous radiation hazards as would an RDD or RED. As the energy travels away from the blast center, it quickly dissipates. This is, viewed, this is viewed as concentric circles of injury and destruction. In the innermost circle of destruction, the buildings will be pretty much flattened and burned, and nobody will be found alive. The next circle will contain massive destruction to all structures. Most of the people will suffer lethal injuries from the radiation, blast wave, and burns. Some victims may survive if they are shielded from the heat and flying debris. However, they might die from a building collapse. The next circle has more survival than those with those patients exposed to the flash suffering from burns. With these patients, while you're assessing them, you want to determine um, how close they were. Uh, we also want to determine the time after exposure that the patient complained, began complaining of any related signs and symptoms. Victims of a nuclear incident can include patients suffering thermal burns, blunt trauma and pressure injuries from the explosive blast and radiation exposure. Those actually exposed may ex uh, complain of nausea, fatigue, malaise, clotting disorders, um, no vo appetite, vomiting, diarrhea. They may have reddening of the skin, as well as rapid onset of capacitation, cardiovascular collapse, confusion, and a burning sensation. Emergency care for these patients uh, is first thing is protecting yourself and patients from further radioactive exposure. Um, treat any thermal and blast injuries, banish your ABCs. You may also provide iodine tablets. These protect against only one of the many harmful effects of radiation, and its doses do, and it does not uh, reduce the need for proper shielding, protect, protective, pro, protective equipment, decontamination, and long-term monitoring. Um, personal protective equipment is required for any expo uh, before you go into any chemical, biological, or radiological nuclear exposure site. Um, do not perform any tasks that you are not trained to perform. Uh, apply the same principles of decontamination as you would for a hazmat scene um, and apply the principles of time, distance, and shielding for radiation exposure like you would for a materials uh, hazmat exposure. A subspecialty of EMS that has grown in, its, uh, in part because of the tragic increase in the frequency of active shooter incidents is that of Tactical Emergency Medical Service or TEMS teams. Although no one, specific, no one specific definition of tactical EMS exists, it can generally be defined as the medical support of operational law enforcement activities. Um, this is not something that you will be taught in this class. Uh, if this is something that you would be interested in, um, you would have to get contact or discuss this with your EMS agency or fire department as well as the police department. Cyber terrorism, this is using uh, a computer network to shut down critical uh, infrastructure. Attacks against industrial con control systems or ICS and supervisory control and data acquisition or SCADA systems within various industries can initiate technological man-made disasters that can escalate into multiple casualty incidents that you may need to respond to. Medical devices such as ventilators, defibrillators, or even IV pumps if connected to a computer network could be accessed and exploited to cause patients harms. Um, protected health information or PHI may also be illegally accessed through the use of cyber terrorism. Alright guys, that completes this chapter. If you have any questions, please be sure to send them me a message either in Blackboard or in Remind. Uh, make sure that you are doing your Brady Labs. Also, if you have any questions while doing your Brady Labs, make sure you hit that uh, send to instructor button in the question help. Y'all have a good rest of your day, and I will see y'all next time in class.